Greetings. I'm Chris Anderson. I'm one of the staff team at Girl Scouts Heart of Michigan. And I am guessing that at least a few of you know that March is Women's History Month. I'm also guessing that a lot of you spend some time over the last year reaching out to thank our essential medical workers. Maybe you put up a banner in your community that said thank you. Maybe you sent a few cards or posted a video. And I'm guessing that a lot of you made sure that those essential medical workers got some great Girl Scout cookies to say thank you. Now, many of you may be wondering what Women's History Month and essential medical workers have to do with each other. So let's start by asking ourselves what professions come to mind when we say essential medical workers. Doctors? nurses, surgeons, medical researchers. Now, if you named any of those, you're right. But they're not the only essential medical workers. And in a little bit, we're going to take a look at some medical professions you might not have thought about or might not be too familiar with. First though, I'm wondering if any of these pictures are what comes to mind when you think about the word doctors. These are some pictures that came up at the top of the page when I typed that term into an image search. You'll notice that there are a number of women included in this search image. And that changed a little when I changed the search to Doctors 1980 and Doctors 1950. So you can see as we go back a bit in time, the popular perception of doctor was more often male, not female. But if you enter Doctors 1850, well, you'll still find a lot more images of men as doctors than women. You'll also find a picture of this woman. This is Elizabeth Blackwell. And Elizabeth broke some major barriers for women who wanted to study to become doctors back in the midnight or mid 1800s. Elizabeth was the first female doctor in the United States. She'd been rejected by medical schools in Charleston, Philadelphia, and New York. Now, when she applied to the Geneva Medical College, the dean of the college and his all-male faculty were more than a little hesitant to make such a bold move as accepting a woman student. So, the dean put the question of Elizabeth's admission up to a vote, and that was among 150 men who made up the school's student body. If one student voted no, Elizabeth would have been barred from admission. Well, apparently, the students thought that request was basically just a silly joke, and they voted unanimously to let her in. And they were surprised, to say the least, when she arrived at school ready to learn how to heal. Now, Elizabeth wasn't the only woman who made a difference for women in medicine. The National Library of Medicine, in fact, lists 12 notable women in medical history. And you can learn about those women by taking a quiz at this link. Now, FYI, the quiz is definitely not an easy one, and it includes some names that aren't too familiar to many of us. So maybe some of the following information will help you increase your score. Another notable doctor worked as a nurse for eight years, despite a lack of formal training but that work helped her get letters of recommendation for her admission into the New England Medical College. And four years later, in 1864, she earned her medical degree. This groundbreaker was the first African-American woman in the U.S. to earn an MD. She practiced in Boston before moving to Richmond, Virginia after the Civil War ended in 1865. And there she worked with other black physicians, caring for formerly enslaved individuals who wouldn't have had access to care. She's Rebecca Lee Crumpler. 
Now, in the field of nursing, this woman was born at a time and in a place where wealthy women were expected to become wives and mothers. But she had other plans. Instead, she became a nurse, advocating that the sick and poor, who were then cared for by other poor people, receive care from people with medical training. She helped plan hospitals, she founded a school of nursing, and that's just among many things. And she's best known as the founder of the modern nursing profession. She's Florence Nightingale. Now, as a researcher, this woman wasn't allowed to study at the University of Warsaw because she was female. So she joined a bunch of other students at a secret university where her favorite subjects were math, chemistry, and physics. She eventually went to Paris to study and worked at a lab with a man who became her husband. She and her husband became famous for their research on radioactivity and the discovery of two previously unknown elements, polonium and radium. She shared a Nobel Prize in physics with her husband and another scientist in 1903, but in 1911, the Nobel Prize in chemistry was all hers. She was the first person and the only woman to win a Nobel Prize twice. She's Marie Curie. Looking at some of the medical groundbreaking in an area that might not have been the first that came to mind for you earlier is a woman who made a significant contribution to medical education, among other things. She lived in Florida during the early 1900s and was well aware that her community of Daytona Beach was lacking a hospital that would help people of color. She was an educator and had started a school for African-American girls in Daytona Beach. So after she was called to the bedside of a young student, she had the idea to set up a hospital because it was clear to her that the student needed immediate medical attention, but there was no local hospital to take her to that would treat African-Americans. The hospital was established with two beds, and within a few years, that had grown to 20 beds. Today, that site is a university with schools that include nursing, health sciences, science, engineering, and mathematics. Besides that groundbreaking work, and at a time when African-American women had difficulty getting employment in white collar positions, she was an advisor to President Franklin Roosevelt, who was also vice president of the NAACP and president and founder of the National Council of Negro Women. You might be surprised to know that the very first statue on public land in Washington, D.C., to honor an African-American and a woman is of Mary Jane McLeod Bethune. Now, I think Mary Jane is a great example of being engaged in a non-traditional, but still very much essential medical career. Now, maybe you've been thinking about what you can do as a worker in a medical field. And maybe besides thinking about a career as a doctor or a nurse or even a researcher, you've been looking for a little more information and insight on some other medical careers. How about a cast technician? And we'll let Angel tell you a little bit more about that. My name is Angel and I'm a cast tech. Cast techs put on cast, take cast off, and build splints. The cast room is like a miniature ER because we see so many fractures. On any given day, we see broken ankles, legs, fingers, wrists, elbows, and toes. Don't be nervous, buddy. We'll take good care of you, okay? okay. We try to make it fun. We make it a fun atmosphere for them. I always say the hardest question of the day is what cast color are you gonna pick? The scariest part about coming in is the saw. I'll show you on my hand that it won't hurt. You ready? It's really not that bad. We have headphones that help the, the children with the noise. 
The best advice that I would give to someone is that they should definitely learn medical terminology so that they have a better understanding of the bones that are in the body. My coworkers taught me everything I needed to know, and today I'm an excellent cast tech. You need to be patient, you need to be sympathetic, and you definitely need to have a sense of humor. A fun part of my day is being the first one to sign someone's cast. I love this job. Or maybe a medical waste technician. They ensure that toxic materials are disposed of in a way that protects both humans and the environment from harm. They collect contaminated materials, put them in saville tray safe disposable containers, and then dispose of them according to legal and regulatory requirements. Or maybe even a drone human interaction specialist. Okay. That one isn't a real profession yet. Okay, but maybe it just needs a groundbreaker like you. And here's some great Girl Scout activities you can take a look at to help you get started. Now, for example, our next First Aid Fanatics virtual program will happen in April. If you're a Girl Scout Brownie, you'll have the chance to learn about how to take care of family and friends and folks in need during a medical emergency. Now, if you're not a Girl Scout Brownie, take a moment to check out our events calendar and see what's coming up in the way of program that can help you learn more about non-traditional medical and other careers. Now, you and your sister Girl Scouts might also want to check out some of the STEM activity books available at the Girl Scouts Heart of Michigan Council shop. They'll give you some great ideas for hands-on activities that will expand your STEM savvy. And that's going to be critical if you decide you do want to become a drone human interaction specialist. And while you're at it, here's a few other cool items that you can check out. Well, I hope that Women's History Month and our look at some medical groundbreakers has inspired you to consider some medical, essential medical professions that might be right for you and to keep bringing joy to our essential medical workers with thanks, smiles, cards, and more Girl Scout cookies. Thanks so much for watching.